Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k Tyranid. We're doing another video today where we're going to be talking about one of the new detachments from the Tyranid Codex. And this time we're going to be looking at the Assimilation Swarm, which is the new detachment. Now we've already done the Crusher Stampede, we've already done the Unending Swarm. And of course the Invasion Fleet was the, the launch fleet, so we've already kind of covered that really. But yeah, we're going to go through this one. And we're going to start us off with the actual detachment rule, which is Feed the Swarm. So, what is Feed the Swarm? In your command phase, each harvester unit from your army that is within range of an objective marker you control can regenerate one friendly Tyranids model within 6 inches of it, and the unit can be regenerated once per phase. Each time a unit regenerates, do one of the following. So one model can either regain D3 Lost Wounds, or one destroyed infantry model excluding characters is returned to the unit with full wounds remaining. And if it's an endless multitude unit, you can get up to well, you get three destroyed units back rather than D3. Rather well, than one, sorry, not D3. So it kind of feels a bit Necron like to be honest with you. So I'm, so far, I'm kind of liking it, but I know there's gonna be a few flaws. I mean instantly I can see a flaw already with, with the harvester units. That's a new keyword that's related to, well, just Four, only four units within the entire codex are harvester units. Yeah, unfortunately they're not the greatest. Well, one of them's okay. I suppose they're okay. They're just okay. The Psychophage is one of them. The, the Horus Vex is one of them. Pyrovores and Ripper Swarms. So at least we've got a cheaper option. Well, there's two cheap options, really. So we need to have a unit of one of those, and then a unit within six inches of that harvester unit and that harvester unit needs to be within range of an objective that we can control. So yeah, it's quite a little bit of a, a twisted... There's a lot to it, there's a lot to it. I mean, we're not even talking about Synapse here, which is a complete different aura. That's another thing to think about. And none of those four harvester units actually have Synapse. So we've kind of got two bubbles going off here. It does get a little bit confusing. But what I do like about this is the fact that we're bringing back one entire infantry model. I mean, that could be a Tyrant Guard model with a Tyrant with a Hive Tyrant as, as in a unit. You could be bringing one of those back. I just don't like the fact that we're, we've got only four Harvester units and they've got to be holding an objective as well. But yeah, that is the main ability, Feed the Swarm. So as you might have spotted, neither of the four Harvester units are characters. So we're gonna have to be mixing things up a little bit and we're gonna have to be taking other units, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's the other models in the, it's the other characters in fact, that we're taking are going to be taking these enhancements. Now these enhancements are going to be purely related to the assimilation swarm, so you can't be using adaptive biology, for example, from the invasion fleet. You got to get that out of your mind. It's purely these four for this detachment. So the first one is regenerating monstrosity for 20 points, and you basically get to do this regeneration ability twice in a phase rather than once, and it only works on a non-monster character. Why non-monster characters, first of all? I mean, there's what have we got left, really? There's just a winged Tyranid Prime, there's, and that's got, what, six wounds? You've got the Broodlord with six wounds, you've got the... not even the Death Leaver, because that's an epic hero. And the Parasite and Mortrex has five wounds, I want to say. So do we really need a double regen? Don't really know. Don't think it's worth the 20 points. I mean, maybe... It makes them almost undefeatable. You've got to like wipe them out in one in one go, otherwise they're going to regenerate to full. Maybe that's the, the, the thinking process behind these. But I would like to have seen it on a monster, but unfortunately, can't do it. The second one is Instinctive Defense for 15 points, and it's a free heroic intervention. And you also get to fight first if a harvester unit is within 6 inches. So you can have a little Ripper Swarm unit, just hiding behind the corner, within 6. Then you get into fight first as well. Now I don't think it's bad, but you're going to find this throughout this entire detachment. Everything seems to be related to having a harvester unit within 6 inches here, harvester unit within 6 inches there. And we are going to have to have a lot of little ripper swarms running around in order to do this. We can't be having three psychophages and you know that gets kind of expensive and kind of pointless. Now maybe this would be good to use on a high tyrant with some tyrant guard again. Or a Broodlord maybe with some, with some Gene Stealers, being able to fight first. But yeah, you've got that restriction again of 6 inches of a Harvester unit, which I think is, is starting to annoy me already. But let's carry on. The next one is Biophagic Floor, which isn't... Blah, 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 blah. 
Cryophagic Flow, which is an aura for 10 points. Uh, basically, you're doing the regeneration ability through the swarm within 9 inches rather than 6 inches. So it's a little bit like the, the synaptic linchpin with synapse from the invasion fleet. You're just gaining a bigger aura. Yeah, that can be useful, I suppose, but it's only going to work on that one character and the unit that the character's in. In fact, I need to go back to that. It's while a friendly harvester model is within 12 inches of the bearer when using Feed the Swarm ability. The harvester model can regenerate on a friendly timid unit within 9. There's just too many different auras and things going back and forth here. Let me just read this one more time to get this in my head right. While a friendly harvester unit is within 12 inches of the bearer, so let's just say, for example, the bearer was a, a broodlord. So you're within 12 inches of a psychophage. And you're going to be using your Feed the Swarm ability. That harvester model can regenerate a friendly timid unit within 9 inches rather than 6. So it's like a three-way thing now. So the broodlord could be within 12 inches. And if it's within 12 inches, it means the, the Ripper Swarm unit gets a 9-inch aura. Or a 9-inch ability of Feed the Swarm, not an aura. A 9-inch Feed the Swarm ability to a unit within 9 inches rather than 6. It just gets so complicated at this point, and I, I really don't like it. It's giving me a headache. It's really giving me a headache. And again, we've not even done synapse here. So it's... Right, next one. Next one before I go bang. Parasitic Biomorphology. 25 points. This is the most expensive one. You are get. I'm going to read it straight from here because it makes more sense. One to the Moroni. Add one to the strength characteristics on the melee weapons in the bearer's unit. And in the first time the bearer's unit destroys an enemy unit in the fight phase, while the bearer is within 6 inches of one or more friendly harvester units, to the end of the battle add one to the attack's characteristics of the melee weapons equipped with the models in the unit. Okay, why do they do this? Okay, so you're going to get a plus one to your strength of all models in the unit, that just comes as standard from the get-go, turn one. And if you destroy a unit, in the fight phase, while within 6 inches of the harvester unit, you're going to get for the rest of the game, one extra attack with your melee weapons. Okay, great. I mean, what am I thinking here? Ty tyrant guard again? Ty tyrant guard, sorry, with the hive tyrant again. Plus one to the strength could be useful, I think they are strength 9, the hive tyrants. Again, I'm looking at the broodlords and the gene stealers. Maybe even the Winged Tyranid Prime with the Tyranid Warriors. That's something you could do. I just hate this whole weirdness. It's it's really complicated. And I kind of had enough of that in Ninth Edition with the Synaptic Reigns thing. And it seems to all be coming back. Let's move into the stratagems. Hopefully this is a little bit more clean cut. I bet it ain't, but let's go for it. First one is Brood Guard Impulse. It's one command point and you're going to be using it in any phase. On one harvester unit from your army that was just destroyed, you can use the stratagem even though they've just been destroyed. Until the end of the battle, each time a friendly Tyranid model makes an attack that targets that enemy unit that just destroyed your harvester unit, add one to the wound roll. So to simplify that, the model that just destroyed your harvester unit, you've now got an army wide plus one to wound against that, that unit that just destroyed us. That's in both range and melee attacks I believe, yes. So this could be really good for Ripper Swarms because they're cheap and they're easy to kill. You could just throw them at your opponent and as soon as they get killed, 1 CP, the unit that just killed them, you're now getting a plus 1 to wound army wide. So that could be good if you're throwing these at the, you know, the big stuff, the big hitters, that could be really useful. And it's last in all game, both range and melee as we mentioned. I mean, even against the smaller targets, a plus one to wound is, is still pretty good. I mean, let's give you some examples. I've got them written down here. Exocrine's Bioplasmic Cannon. If you're going up against Terminators, you're usually wounded on a three plus because it's strength eight versus toughness five. You're now wounding them on a two plus. Cool. Maybe it's your Lictors with the Precision Ability going after characters. They're now wounded on twos against those characters instead of threes. Nice. Maybe it's some Termagants with their when they're normally wounded on 3s against Space Marines with Strength 5, now you're going to be wounded on... Well, now you're wounded on 3s. You were wounded on 4s, you're now wounded on 3s. With a lot of shots there, the Devourers, for example, Spine Fist, whatever. That could be quite a cool one, and I quite like that. So yeah, that's a thumbs up from me so far. The next one is Reclaim Biomass for 1 Command Point. 
Any phase when a Tyrannus model from your army is destroyed, before the last model is removed from play, from play, one harvest unit from your army that's within 6 inches, that's the target. So you've got to have a harvest unit within 6 inches of that destroyed unit, and you can effectively do this regeneration for the swarm ability before it goes. So it potentially keeps the unit alive. Now my question here is, and I don't know the answer to this, maybe you guys can help me, can you then allocate the rest of the attacks if there's any leftover attacks? Can you allocate them to the, the, the models that are coming back? I don't think so, otherwise there'll be no point, but I don't know, it doesn't really say whether you can or can't. It's before the last model is removed from play. So technically the dice are still allocated to the unit. And it's almost like having like a mini feel no pain save. So I would say yes, you, they still can be allocated, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll have to find out on that one. Terraformed is the next one for one command point done in the command phase on a harvester unit that is within range of an objective marker you control, which you kind of need to be to be doing Feed the Swarm. Which is in fact going back to the other one. It doesn't actually say you need to be controlling it, does it? Although it kind of brackets and says feed the swarm, so I don't know. They're very unclear. This is very unclear to me. A lot of questions. A lot of questions for this detachment. Right, go back to this Terraformed in command phase on a harvester unit that's on an objective that you control. The objective marker remains under your control even if you've got no models within range of it until your opponent actually controls it. So you've actually given yourself sticky objectives. That could be pretty cool for, first of all, smaller games where there's not as many opposing units to come and steal objectives, so it's really good there. It's going to be freeing your unit. Let's say you've got a Psychophage at the back and you're just leaving the area. That objective is still yours. It's forcing your opponent to come and deal with it, so it's freeing up a unit to go and do something else, which is always cool. You can all, it's, In fact, it's better on Rippers, which they're getting quite a few mentions already, aren't they? Rippers coming on maybe from reserves, and they can start scoring really heavily mid to late game because they can jump onto an objective, sticky objectives with the Tyranniformed, go to the next one, and you can keep doing this every turn, and then you've still got your unit freed up, unless it actually gets destroyed, I suppose. But yeah, another decent one. Another decent one, I like that one. The next one is Ablative Carapace. Ablative Carapace, that's two command points, this one, so it's expensive. When in your opponent's shooting phase or the fight phase, just after enemy unit selects its targets, you're going to be doing it on one harvester unit from your army that was selected as a target. And the effect is until the end of the phase, you gain a 5 plus 4 and a pain save. And if you're in, within range of an objective marker you control, you're going to be gaining a 4 plus 4 and a pain save instead. Yeah, that's. Oh, I mean, that's, why is that so expensive? Two command points for a 4 and a pain save for one phase. I mean, it's a really nice line. Forget the CP for a moment. It's a really good line of defense. But we've only got the four harvester units to deal with. I mean, we do need to keep them up and running for the detachment to be more effective. But yeah, from the four, are you going to use it on a Pyrovore? Probably not. They're a bit too cheap for that. Are you going to use it on a Psychophage? They've already got a six plus for no pain save. And that's an aura, so they don't really need it. Rippers, I'm not that fussed about keeping alive, but it could be annoying to give them a 4 plus wound of pain save, I suppose, because they've got so many wounds. The only one really is the Horus Vex, because that's probably the better one out of the four. And yeah, two command points there, that's quite a lot. I mean, there is those odd occasions where you could use this on a Pyroval just to keep it up and running. But yeah, uh, two command points. A little bit pricey, a little bit pricey. Next we've got Secure Biomass, we're back to 1 CP, nice, that's where it should be. 1 Tyranny's unit from your army that has not been selected to fight this phase. To the end of the phase, melee weapons have lethal hits, and if the unit is a harvester unit, you're going to be getting 5 plus critical hits rather than 6 plus critical hits. So, what do we do with this? This is melee only, don't forget, so it's purely the fight phases only. Now, Hormagons would have a field day with this, because they've got 3 attacks each. You've got units such as the Von... Ryan's Leapers, they've got a bunch of attacks, so that giving them all lethal hits could be really good. Even Rippers with Strength 2, the Strength part doesn't really matter with lethal hits, does it? Because if you get that 6+, it's going to be lethal. It's going to be lethal. Out of the actual Harvester units, well yeah, we just mentioned one, Rippers, that's going to be on a 5+, plus then in fact. 
Rippers have got the 5 plus critical hits. Psychophage, meh. Pyroball, meh. Horus Vex, maybe, maybe. I don't really. How many attacks do the Horus Vex actually get? Horus Vex are getting 14 attacks with 4 additional attacks. Now, is it all weapons or is it one weapon? Melee weapons. So that would be all 18 attacks from the Horus Vex would in fact have a 5 plus critical hit. That's not bad. I think that's okay on the Horus Vex. I think that's okay. The Psycho Phase, while I've got the page here, D6 plus 1 attacks. Yeah. Anti Psycho 4 plus. Oh, I, don't, I don't think I'd use it on the Psycho Phase. Ripper Swarms have got 6 attacks each. Sustain hits one as well. Sustain hits one and lethal hits on a five plus. In fact, does that stack? It would stack, wouldn't it? Because it just says five plus hits. Hit rolls of five plus score a critical hit. So that would in fact add to their sustain hit. So that's a nice little combination that's gone under the radar for a bit. And said, I've just spotted it. So cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I like that one. That's good. Now, unfortunately, it's got less of use with units such as Tyranid Warriors or Raveners due to the clash with Twin Linked because Twin Linked and Lethal Hits don't really... I mean, they, they do help each other, but the more you get with the Lethal Hits, the less you've got to do with the Twin Linked. I mean, it's not quite a clash, but it's a bit of a mini clash. Same with Gene Stealers because they've got Dev Wounds. So if you are getting the Lethal Hits, then you're not actually rolling to Wound to score a Dev Wound. From the that's obviously from the brood lord if you've got a brood lord within the unit on to the last stratagem we got rapacious hunger for one cp this is a battle tactic stratagem in your fight phase so only your turn here one turn unit from your army that has just destroyed an enemy unit your unit immediately regenerates c feed the swarm when doing so if your unit is a harvester unit and you choose for one modest regain d3 look we wound you basically get three back now, because it keeps having the bracket and saying, see, feed the swarm, you'd have to imagine you have to go by the rules of feed the swarm, which means you need to be on an objective that you control. So it's very easy to kind of forget that part. Also, you need to be within six inches of a harvester unit if it isn't a harvester unit. It's also very easy to forget that part. So you don't just regenerate without a harvester unit there. So there's a lot of things that need to be in place for this to actually happen. But it is nice to have an extra way of... I was going to say reanimating, an extra way of regenerating, because this is not Necrons, and especially when you're doing it just before your opponent's turn, you're doing it in your fight phase, so you've already done it in your command phase, maybe you've done it in another phase with another stratagem, now you're doing it in your fight phase, just in time for well, a few things. You're going to be doing it to potentially gain an objective or gain control of an objective, for secondary objectives, although the harvester unit has to be within control of an objective within six inches, so you probably already have it. Also, maybe you're going to deny your opponent primary objectives in terms of points on their turn because you've got more OC. And maybe also, in fact, it just relates to not being battle shops and things like that. But yeah, I'm not massively keen on that one. I just there's just too many issues with it. A, you've got to be within range of an objective you control. B, you're within range of an objective that has a harvester unit on it. And C, you need to have entirely cleared a unit as well, which you've completely just bypassed that. You need to actually destroy a unit in order for all those things to just begin happening. Ooh, yeah, I don't like that one. Not really for me. Let's move into the pros and cons for this assimilation swarm. Start with the pros. Feels kind of Necron-like, so that's just a pro for me personally. Um, yeah, regenerate models, reanimate models, we like that. And your opponent needs to focus fire on one unit, which we didn't really discuss much in this video. If they're not focus firing on one unit and they're just sort of sharing the, the attacks out across the board, then you're just going to be regenerating all the different units. So you're kind of forcing your opponent to deal with one unit at a time, which also is a bit of a flaw, but we'll talk about that in the con. In fact, we're on the cons now. So we're requiring the use of four so-so units i say so-so the horus vex is actually okay but the rest of them are just sort of average they're just average and we are really relying on them and quite a few of them as well bearing in mind we can only take three maximum of three per data sheet rippers that's fine because they're cheap are we taking three psychophages no 
Pyrovores, they're cheap, I suppose that could be okay. And the Horus Vex, maybe you take one or two, but they're sort of doing their own thing, they're not there to control an objective. Unless they're trying to steal an objective maybe, but... I think it's a bit of a problem, which brings me to my next point, which is Harvester Units will be target number one. If your opponent knows you've got this detachment and your entire detachment rule revolves around these Harvester Units, then they're just going to be targeting the Harvester Units to begin. So then your detachment rule just kind of goes. There's lots of odd interactions, like with the enhancements in particular, it was very complicated, very... I don't know whether it's poorly written or whether I'm just reading it wrong, but for me it just seems a little bit overcooked in terms of how I'm reading them. So I would like to have seen that a little bit more simplified. No Harvester unit has Synapse, which again, that kind of goes back to the previous point. There's a second bubble that's going off in the back of your head. With Are they within range of Synapse? Da -da 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 -da, for Battle Shock and all that stuff. That's a whole different aura that you've got to deal with. So you've got your Harvester aura, your Synapse aura. It just gets really complicated. And finally, Focus Fire on our units means no regeneration. Regenerating units. If they are focus firing on purely one model at a time and all the other models have been left unscathed then they're not going to be needing to regenerate because they're at full wounds, they're at full strength. Very similar problem with the Necrons and you're kind of relying on your opponent to do the damage for you to gain your buff. Which is never really a great thing. Now you can use this to your advantage as we mentioned in the pros that knowing that your opponent has to deal with one unit at a time will give you a bit of a buff in your mind to think, right, if they're touching that, if they're going for that unit, that means these units on the right hand side are probably clear to go, send them up. They're very unlikely to be targeted and if they do get targeted, it means your opponent is spreading their load, so therefore you're going to likely get regenerate on multiple units. Kind of going back into the pros there, but you kind of get my drift. So what's the overview for this detachment? It should be called the Necron Swarm, really. I love the idea of it, but I don't like it that it's centred around the four units. None of which are brilliant units, apart from maybe the Horus Specs, as we mentioned. They seem to work better in this detachment, units like Ripper Swarms, but it's probably because we are overly relying on them in this detachment. If you were to just say, give a load of other units the Harvester keyword, then would we look at the Pyrovols? Would we look at the Ripper Swarms? Possibly not. So they've kind of been given this role and put on a bit of a pedestal purely because they've got that keyword and there's not many that do. I also, as mentioned, hate the fact that we've got kind of two range bubbles to now work with. It gets a little bit complicated for me. Don't like it. I think the Harvester units should have maybe just got Synapse. Or just used Synapse. I don't know. Obviously, law-wise, that doesn't really work. But it just seems a little bit overcomplicated. And there's a lot to deal with. Is it a competitive detachment? I don't think it is. I really don't think it is. Not for me. So guys, that is my analysis of the Assimilation Swarm. You'll have to let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below. If I've missed anything, also let me know as well. And yeah, do you think it's competitive? Because I definitely don't. But guys, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.